Join the Cougar Collective today, your home base for all NIL opportunities, connecting student athletes, fans, and business owners. Join the 1890 Club for as little as $18.90. You can also make a one-time donation. And if you're a business, you can collaborate your brand. Also, drink the Old Crimson Legendary Lager brewed by Pike Brewing. Sales benefit the Cougar Collective. Visit cougarcollective.org. Go Cougs! What time's the game this weekend? 12.30. How do you get Peacock? Yeah, how do you, how do you get <laughs> Peacock? Where's it? I don't like streaming. That dog's crapping on my front yard again. Yeah. Oh, he's got some story. But he, I'll just go ahead and finish your lunch while we're doing and taping the show. <laughs> it's the old Crimson, and I mean old Crimson brought to you by the Cougar Collective, your home base for all NIL opportunities, connecting student athletes, fans, and business owners. Join today just like Jim Moore did or is going to do Yay. the 1890 Club for as little as $18.90 a month. You can also make a one time donation. And the old Crimson Legendary Lager just off my left shoulder. Look at that beauty back there. Uh, brewed by Pike Brewing Sales Benefit, the Cougar Collective. Visit cougarcollective.org and also brought to you by Flatstick Pub. Cougar owned and operated. Big thanks to Andy Largent and the crew out there. Kirkland, Pioneer Square, South Lake Union, Spokane, Bellingham, and Redmond. Great place. A ladies' night, guys' night. Large group event. Great for kids. Great place to watch the Cougs win. Great place to watch them this weekend win. Visit flatstickpub.com. Uh, Paul Sorensen, All-American Safety at Washington State, and Jim Moore. He went there. It's the old <laughs> Crimson I did. podcast. 315 GPA, and I spent most of my time in Moscow, Idaho. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's go. I'm an All right. American and, uh, you know, 19-year-old drinking age over there in Idaho when I was in school. What, what, was, the, what was the bar of choice in Moscow, Idaho uh, for you, Jim Moore? Billiard Den, without question. You could back, back in the 70s, Puck, you could take five bucks. Everybody took five dollars. And you could go over there. A pitcher was a dollar. Everybody would get four quarters. We'd play foosball. Losers chug foosball, of course. You'd have quarters for the jukebox. I heard Tush the other night, you know, the ZZ Top song. I still sure. remember that being J5 on the, uh, the jukebox there at the billiard den. And then you'd still have a dollar left to get something at, uh, what was it, pa Ta Taco John's? Paul, you remember Taco John's? Ooh, no. They're on the corner. Yes, you do. You were what were you two into he football? Just said go to Idaho? Idaho. He he doesn't eat out. remember it. It was Taco <laughs> John's. Yeah, you get an apple grande for a dollar and yeah, five bucks. And you'd have a great evening. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. He, he doesn't remember. You want to yell at him more for not remembering it or Well, he mustn't have gone to Idaho much. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. I oh, went you did? Corner Club was my place. That's where I liked uh, to go hang out. And and then we'd go, there was a disco place that we'd go to. And I remember get, we got in a fight and I got thrown over the bar and I was sitting on the other side and Sam Merriman was laying on the bottom of the floor drinking a beer. So he gave me one and we sat there and watched the fight go on while we were drinking beverages on the back side of the bar. You know, Jim, well, when I went to- Was that Hyde's? Was it Jekyll no, and Hyde's? Oh, it, I, I forgot. It was yeah. Trashers or some- darn thing i'll think of it in about 15 minutes when the memory kicks in you know when i went to school many many like like 25 almost 30 years after you guys i think that same bar in moscow was over there that five dollars but for then it was it was five dollars all you can drink here hmm. yeah it was and i think it was at that place jim that, that you're talking about oh at uh, jekyll and hyde's no, Billiard's Den, but I think they renamed it. But it was like, right, when you walked in, was the whole bottom floor just was a bunch of billiards? Was Ratskeller still there when you were there? That's it. That was the name of it. There you go. Well, that uh, wasn't a disco place. Yeah, kind of. Well, you could no, box it on Wednesday they nights. No, it wasn't. They had live bands there. They weren't playing Dude, disco I was at after rats. you, man. They changed it. We also got to box. <laughs> I got to fight Wednesday nights. I also had to fight Pat Beach, and he'd knock me out in the third round every time. That what sucked. Hell? You would fight people like yeah, Fight Club? Yeah, you put gloves on. You'd go in and you'd box. You'd get little, they'd do Jesus. little one-minute one, one minute rounds, and and uh, nobody would ever fight beach, so I would, and, and I would lose. It was okay. fun. Well, that's, that's, a hell of a, that's a hell of a story. I love it. Uh, Jim, did you ever fight anybody? Did you ever go over to Moscow and fight? Fight club? 
No, nah, the, only, the only fight I got in was a real short one uh, in Renton, Washington, outside the <laughs> was it at the whistle stop and yeah, the guy the guy landed a roundhouse right and I had to go to Valley General and get stitches. Yeah. It was not okay. good. I, I lost the fight. Did you? Yeah. Um, all right. The uh, folks, I mean, I don't know how much time you want to spend on Texas Tech. I mean, we can spend a lot. I mean, the, the highlight, of course, of Texas Tech was was John Mateer's performance. And and I told you so. I told you both you sons of bitches. I told you how good he was. Look at that guy. Yeah, I'm not going to let it's not going to live it down. The guy damn near had 200 yards rushing. Give him. Is it too did he, early? Did he beat out? Uh, did he beat out uh, the quarterback that's now a top three uh, Heisman Trophy candidate oh. at Miami? Did well, he win if, that battle? If the collect, checking. if the collective had given him a truck, yeah. <laughs> he didn't need a truck. He had his own. He's a Texas guy. He doesn't no, need to freaking run a truck. He just rolls in with his own. It went. Will Paul? Can we go there when he's invited to New York? If he's invited to New York, I will come over and I will ball wash you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I love John Mateer. He's a great guy. He's a hell of a quarterback. He's doing an awesome job. Remember, he's only a redshirt sophomore, okay? So if we can figure out a way to hang on to him, if he continues to trend like he's trending, I'll also say this. The reason he had such great success running against Texas Tech, guess what they did? They dropped eight. When you drop eight, you run the football. And they rushed for over 300 yards because they dropped eight and ran the football. Yeah. Mateer had a great game. He made great reads. Everybody's moaning and bitching about him only throwing for 115 yards. He didn't have to throw 150 or 350. He did what they needed to do to win the game, which was run the ball, move the clock, flip the field, and the defense kicked their ass. Yeah. Four turnovers, four fourth down conversions. That's eight turnovers in my book. That game was won not because of Mateer. He, he made a difference. It was won because of the defense. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say the game, cool was, game cool was, was one for Mateer. <laughs> Go I ahead, Jeff. Puck, Puck, I just checked the Heisman Trophy odds. He's not listed on my oh. betting website. I was disappointed. <laughs> How? <laughs> How? Is he not listed? Come I on. He should be the favorite. I was ready to bet on him. I want to bet on John Mateer for the Heisman Trophy. You know what you I know did? What I, know I found complete, odds on the hey, – Hey, Jim, you know what his average completion hey, Paul, uh, yardage is per game? <laughs> Paul, I was per, talking. Per catch? 24 <laughs> yards he's averaging throwing the ball down the field. How about that? Excuse me, sir. Sir, the uh, oh. the, the senator from Bend has the floor. He looks very handsome with his white hair, though. I never seen it without his hat. <laughs> I did. Mm. I think you might find this of interest. Uh, you know, rarely do I have anything of interest, but I think I do with this one. <laughs> the Cougs are a thousand to one to win the national championship, and I put two bucks on us. <laughs> of course you did. A thousand to one. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Did that look like a thousand to one team to you Saturday night, rolling over Texas Tech? <laughs> Wow, I think Texas Tech is a pretty bad football team, but hey, whatever. I don't want to rain on your parade and your bet, so I'm in. Yeah, I mean, we, we've got. A show. I mean, we look like a national championship contender Saturday night, <laughs> didn't we? <Jeez. laughs> I love how much you you sop it up. I love it. God, no, it's great. I, no, hey, I, mean, I want to say this. You know, I know there's questions about material. You know, because you look at his numbers, his passing numbers. What was he nine for nineteen? But he had several drops. Maybe, you know, he needs to have a little more touch on some of his passes. But still, God, that kid, that kid's going to throw for 300 yards in some games this year. And maybe it'll happen this week, hopefully. He's he's going to have – did Tuya Sopo have the game where it was 300 and 200? Am I crazy? No. Or Marcus? I, I know he was Marcus. 200 and 200, yeah. but I might have been 300. Yeah, I think he Wasn't did. it 300, 200? Yes. I mean, I could I could against Nebraska do. even? I, I mean, I could see Mateer doing that at some point. Easily. Yeah, he Easily. could. So, but Puck, if he runs for two hundred every game, he's not going to make it through well, the season. Well, I, no. I know. I think no there way. there is there is definitely some risk with him taking off and running so much. But he is a he is an absolute weapon. That's why he'll be such an X factor coming up on Saturday. It's not, it's Washington's defense is not that good, especially up front. He should be able to, to have some have some plays there uh, there in the running game. I should mention this too. Uh, during the, this show and start moving forward every week, Jamie Venick of Coog Fan is going to stop on by for about 10 minutes or so and just give us a practice report, news and notes uh, from Pullman. So just, j- Jim, just alerting you on that one. Okay, well, actually, wait, did you think that Paul and I weren't enough on the old Crimson bro- pod- <laughs> broadcast or podcast or whatever the fuck you're calling it? Uh, that's that's what the um, 
That's what the feedback was. <laughs> oh, we need not some people that crimson anymore. Then, if you got oh, Jamie yeah. Vinnick, because she's young. Yeah, but I think when you see Vinnick, he looks kind of old. Well, oh, he does. He's, we're actually going to have somebody that knows what the hell they're talking about when it comes to the Cougs. So I guess that's a good sign. That's Did you us, guys? Jim. Okay, so the Texas. Can we just put Texas Tech in the rearview mirror? They won yep. the game. Move on. Did you guys see? You saw this, right? You you saw the um, the Jake Dickert locker room. I did not see that. I didn't either. Oh, this is great. This is uh, in the locker room with his team, like midnight, uh, celebrating the win over Texas Tech, but, uh, of course, looking ahead uh, to the Apple Cup. Guess what? Huh? How about that? All right. When you wake up, it's Apple Cup week. They get lost his mind up there. He like momentarily blacked out, losing his mind. Um, it's different. It's it's not, we're not. It's not normal. It's not in November. It's not the last game of the year. You know, different conferences. Uh, uh, Jim, I'll start first with you though. How different is this for you? Does it change the animosity? Does it change the the feelings towards uh, this game because it's being played in September, week three? Well, you know, I, I'm i fired up about it. I, I heard Ian today on KJR talking about it and how well, that, he feels like there's a bunch of let's, cougs. Let's that, promote, their, let's promote our, our former radio station. That's good. Well, everybody knows I hate KJR. <laughs> I mean, I love Ian. I mean, shit, they fired me, the bastards. No, I hate him, okay? But I, I still listen to Ian. I, I love yeah. Ian because he's a coog. But he was talking about, I don't know, Paul, if you're hearing this over in Spokane and Puck, maybe you're hearing it in Seattle. But – I'm excited about the game. I'm, it's one of those games. I know it'd be better in November, you know, and there's a bunch of cougs that feel like, you know, Ian was talking about, hey, you know, we don't want to play this game. Well, why Why the hell not? I, I, I think we're in a good spot here. I, I love our spot right now. I'd rather play them in September than November this year because by November they're probably going to have everything in order. But right now they're, they're in transition, the Huskies are. And granted, you know, they've got their two wins against the – the cupcakes that they scheduled there, but I, I just think this is, and, and you know, Dicker talked about it not being a statement win against Texas Tech, but we need to beat those teams. We need to beat a Big 12 team like Texas Tech. We need to beat a Big 10 team like Washington and just remain relevant. And so I, I just think we've got all the intangibles. And to me, I know this is subjective perspective here, but I think we have the better team. I just think we have the better team going into this game. And then when you throw the intangibles into that, we're going to win by double digits in this game. I, I don't I don't give a shit, man. I, I really do not give a shit. Like, oh, Moore's such a fucking homer. Well, yeah, I am. But I think I remember in 21, in 21, we won 40 to 13 when they trotted Heward out there and they had Bob Gregory as their interim coach. Didn't we all know going into that game before the ball was even kicked off that we were going to kick their ass? Yes, we did know that. Paul, you knew that. Puck, you knew that. I mean, I was I had a hard I was trying to get more money down on us, but I don't know the Wi Fi at Husky Stadium, I couldn't do it. I kept trying to get more money down on us. It's the same way with this game. Don't you feel like we're gonna win by double digits? Uh Come on. I mean I, I, I don't, but you you are confident, Paul. What do you think? You think they're gonna win by double digits? Yeah, I think they're gonna win, but I think it should be I'm going twenty four twenty one. I'm going we're gonna kick a field goal late and win it. So we're gonna do to them what they did to us last year and, and mm -hmm. I I played in two of them. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't matter what all the, the fluff and circumstances is on the outside. These are two teams that hate each other. These are two, you know, groups that when you're in this game, the intensity level, it ratches up. And we in 81, when we were playing for the whole thing, we win, we go to the Rose Bowl. They win, they went to the Rose Bowl. And and it their level uh, went up about five notches because they knew what it took, you know, to, to win championships, to to win the Apple Cup. And we had we had to experience that. We were happy to be there. Well, I think Washington State has transitioned. And I think Washington State now is in a position where they're a good football team. And, they're, and, and all you have to do is look at the first game. They, they crushed Portland State. It's Portland State. Who cares? Okay. But they did what they needed to do, played very well. They threw the ball all over the field. You know, they did some dynamic things. Texas Tech sees that. They come in. They throw eight guys into, into pass coverage, and they run it right up their ass and go over 300 yards, which they haven't done in, in I don't know how many years. 
First quarterback since Tim Rosenbaugh to rush over 100 since the school record. And if he wouldn't gotten sacked on first and one mm. at the goal line, he would have had about 208, nine yards, you know, rushing. So now Washington's got to figure out, is this the team's going to throw the ball on us? Are they going to run the ball on us? Are we going to spy on Mateer because he can run? Takes a guy out of coverage. Well, how are we going to do that? They're going to mix a lot of stuff up. We're going to beat them. Jim, where's all the confidence come from? Well, beat a Coog for starters. I, hey, Paul, I like that you brought up Tim Rosenbaugh because, I mean, we talk about Mateer, you know, and Puck has talked about Jake Locker making some comparisons there, which I think there's good comparisons to Locker too. But Tim Rosenbaugh, boy, could he run. And boy, was yeah. he physical. I yeah. mean, and Mateer yeah. the same way. I loved what Mateer had to say after the game where he said, you know, I don't like being tackled. I just don't think anybody should be able to tackle me. And you could see that. You could see that on that 70-yard run or whatever the hell it was. I mean, God, he, he, you couldn't bring him down. And the kid just has got personality in spades. I mean, I just I, – I, I can't be more excited about – that. probably, Puck, when I'm talking about a 10-point win or more, is a lot of it has to do with John Mateer because – what I love, too, is like the air raid, we loved it with Leach and everything, throwing the ball over the lot. But when we were ahead trying to kill the clock and win the game, we couldn't run the ball. And we risked giving the ball back to the opponent. And with this team and with our running backs, we haven't even talked about our running backs. I mean, we got three running backs that are good. And Parker could be a star. So it's, I don't know. You know, I'm always over the top when it comes to the Cougs. But I think there's times, like next week, when we're talking, if the Cougs beat Washington, I'm not going to be all that excited about betting on the Cougs against San Jose State because that'll be an obvious letdown spot. But this game, I, I we have to be more fired up than they are. And I read way too much into intangibles, but you, we check every box when it comes to the intangibles. And it looks like with the tangibles, you check every box in this game this year too. What, what about, Paul, what about all the intangibles? What about fan engagement? Do we check that box? No, not right now. And, and I think the points that are coming across, you know, from the perspective, I love Coop fans. I love what's going on. I understand why they're upset because I feel the same way about the Apple Cup and what happened with Washington and Oregon leaving us in the weeds. But you can't punish this team for that. It's not their fault. It's our responsibility to support our program. And if we don't have enough ball sack to go out and freaking buy tickets, and I don't care how, how expensive the darn thing is, you know, they're doing $50 student section tickets now. That just came out. You're telling me there's not going to be sites that's going to sell this at a discount? Figure out a way to get in the stadium. Support Washington State University. You're in Seattle. Quit making excuses. Go to the freaking game. Give them a chance. Make it loud in there and just have a blast for three and a half hours you know, on Saturday. And this Dickert-led team deserves our support. We need to be there in mass. You know what? The uh, As we're recording this, I had just uh, before it had, had, had interviewed Dickert uh, for the Cougs Corner. Uh, this is the, the second of five installments that we'll have with him throughout the season. And he expressed disappointment in the crowd last week against Texas Tech, that he was really disappointed, that it just wasn't as what it should be. Um, and you know, you, you look at it, there's still some empty seats. Portland state was worse. And, and then, you know, there's got, they got 37,000 tickets that have been sold as of now, when we're recording this, uh, here this week. So m- maybe you'll get closer to, to a full house, probably not. And then of those 37, 38,000, Jim, I, I don't, I don't know how many of them are, are, um, you know, Coug fans. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how many we have sold actually. So it, it's weird. I mean, I, I understand it to a point, but do you get a sense of the apathy? I mean, I certainly do. Um, it, you know, my my fandom, not my Coug fandom, my overall fandom of college football has been a little deteriorated. Not not the Cougars, though. No, well, I, I'm with you on that. I was a little surprised. I I was in the student section uh, Saturday night and looking over at the at the south side. A lot of empty seats over there. Yeah. I don't know how it looked on TV. They usually don't show that side anyway. It's usually just the student side. But uh, I understand Jake's frustration with that. And, Paul, I just – I'm sorry. I'm going to disagree with you on that. Uh, you know, if you want to pay 150 bucks to go to the game, do you really want to – that's a lot of money for people to be paying wow. to go to go to that game, especially – if you're like Puck is saying, apathetic about the game, you're just kind of going, well, I'm out. And I'd be in if it was 40 bucks, but I'm out at 150. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I, I can't go 
And the reason my this sucks, man. It just absolutely sucks. It I love my suck I love you my daughter. Go. I do, and I love my granddaughter. But for some dumbass reason, and hopefully she won't, you know, tune into the old Crimson podcast. <laughs> well, she's uh, gonna hear no, about it. No, I'll send for, her a little. For mean. some unknown reason, she planned a birthday party at three o'clock Saturday for our two my two year old granddaughter. And I'm trying to figure out whether they have Peacock or not. Uh, and I'm guessing they don't. And so I'm probably going to go to that public house in Sumner to watch a game. I got to find a bar to watch a game. And then that's going to be another issue for everybody like me. You know, how the hell do you get Peacock and how much is that going to cost? Just download it, Peacock, on your phone yeah. and watch it on your phone or something. It'll be fine. I don't want to watch it on my phone. I want a big screen. Okay. <laughs> And and I don't want streaming. And then again, um, you look at why we're left on the weeds, why we're out, uh, you know, trying to find a conference. There's always excuses. There's we have always quit, an excuse. We That's what I'm getting tired of. excuses and figure out God. a way. If we want to play big boy football. I agree. We so need tired to step it. up. Okay? So, That's the bottom line. You guys are disagreeing line. with me? I, I yes. just so I'm, I'm tired of the I'm so tired of the excuses with this fan base all the time. Portland State, it's Labor Day. It's too hot. It's Portland what State. Park you go in the wah, game? wah wah wah. I'm second half. I'm going to go scalp tickets. I have a I coach my son's football game. It's not well, like wait I'm, a minute. Well, you you're talking about people coming up with excuses. I'm going to the game oh, at you halftime. Are going to the game. Okay. I'm, I'm going. I have, go, I'm, I have to fly to Louisiana through a hurricane I, to broadcast a game listen, in Hammond, Louisiana. I, We're going to be lucky to get there. Would I rather be at uh, Husky Stadium rooting on the Cougs? Hell yes. Have you been to Hammond, Louisiana? I, I, listen, I have no listen, thank you. I, I understand that people have their stuff that comes up. You, you have you have a birthday party. Life happens. But to hear fans complain about the you know oh it's just too expensive or I don't want to go. But then at the same time bitch and moan about the situation they're in. It just, I, I just over it. It's the same crowd that bitches every year. Friday night game can't go there. Why do you do it? Well, I don't know. It's just, it's a Friday night game. If you want to go, go. But, it, but don't complain about it. I guess is my point. Like I would just say, like I'm on the fence for San Jose State. I've been season tickets. I don't know if I'm going to go to it. It's Friday night. I'm not sure if I can make it. But I, I don't. I'm not going to bitch about it. I'm no, not going to bitch that it's on it's Friday parents night. We, parents weekend. I'm going to go to that game. Yeah. And how many times do we have two undefeated teams? Okay, it's only two and zero, oh, but both of these teams yeah. are undefeated. Get a chance <laughs> to play, and it's the Apple Cup. And if we yeah. win it, then we'll just hide it and never give it back. All right. That's what I want. Let's uh, let's get a let's. Can we bring a professional on here? Thank you, please. Okay, I feel bad he's that got... I upset Paul. Hopefully, I won't upset Jamie. Every week, he we're going to get a little uh, practice news and notes from a professional, and uh, we're going to bring on Jamie Vinnick. From a Coog fan, Jamie, how are you, sir? I'm great. Uh, how about you oh, guys? Jamie. Ooh, just getting a little bit of a feedback there, look, Jamie. Look, I don't it's know young you... Crimson. Young Crimson. It's young. It is young, young Crimson Harry for Jamie. Crimson. Yeah, Man, his beard is a hell of a lot better than yours, Pac. Holy yeah. smokes! <laughs> Boy, that's a that's a professional beard right there. Is what it is. Uh, Jamie Venica here from a Coog fan. You can follow uh, Jamie uh, there on the old exit, uh, Jamie Venick 9, and he's going to join us. Give us a little practice report uh, there from uh, practice. Uh, Jamie, uh, what's the status of some of the injured players that, that you can uh, get us up to date on, uh, specifically Parker? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to, uh, to Wayshon, I don't think there's going to be much issue. I mean, he, I think it was maybe precautionary on Saturday, hey, this guy's going to be a big part of our running game. We don't want to risk him not being available. So I think for that, it was just let's be safe. So I think I would be very surprised if he doesn't go. Um, I think when you look at guys like Carlos Hernandez is still going to be out. Jamori Colson is still going to be out. Uh, Jare Williams is still going to be out. And Nick Hadwell, again, based off what Jake Dickard said, kind of a game time decision. I mean, I think we've seen you kind of could use him back, especially in the holding game. I actually think Janikowski's done a fine job punting the ball. But the field goal operation has been a little messy. You know, uh, you look at four years, Dean's been held by one guy for the most part. That's Haber, and he's been snapped to by one guy, and that's some others that you now suddenly new snapper, new holder. And, well, I, you know, and I, th and I think there's other things at hand, but it hasn't been very clean in that regard. Uh, I think it's, again, it's a game-time decision with uh, Falidi Famoe. You know, I, I think it at the start of uh, this whole recovery process, Dickert seemed to indicate probably week one and then week two. And then he kind of said recently the Apple cup was kind of the target date. You know, I, I think if he plays, it'll be limited. 
Um, I don't think they're going to suddenly say, all right, you're back at right tackle. Here's 80 snaps without having taken a, you know, a whole lot of uh, live action practice snaps. So I think if we see him, it'll be kind of a, hey, let's get some rotation in there, keep some guys fresh. So those are kind of the big ones of, uh, of note. You know, I know we saw uh, Kyle Williams leave Saturday's game, but he came back. He should be good to go. Um, you know, there's all these stuff that could pop up during the week. You know, uh, Jare Williams, for example, was a, a guy who got hurt during the week of practice and suddenly wasn't available uh, for, uh, for this past game. So, um, you know, I, I think, again, you, you never really know, but I don't uh, anticipate a whole lot else changing. The five guys that we kind of named, Colson, Hernandez, uh, and, uh, and Williams are out. I put Fa'amoe and, uh, and Haber in the questionable category. Hey, Jamie, what, what's the concern level for our kicker? Yeah, you know, I, it's, I don't want to say it's, you know, all systems panic yet, but I don't think it's also all systems go. I mean, I think we look back towards the end of last year and he didn't finish well. I mean, that's kind of the cold, hard truth. He finished one of five and you look at some of those games, three points to Stanford, three points to Cal, three points to Washington. You know, one or two of those kicks goes in, you're talking about a bull team. And then it's been a little rocky this year. He obviously misses against Texas Tech. Uh, the PATs, he has two hit the upright against uh, Portland State. He misses one this past week. And, and like I said, I think there's something to be said about the fact that it's a new long snapper uh, with Durham Harris. It's not Simon Samarzic, who he's always been, uh, you know, kind of snapped to. And it's a different holder. You know, he's never kicked out of the hold to John Matier really up until the last couple weeks of practice. Uh, you know, it's almost always been Haber with the exception of the couple times Lincoln Victor did it last year. So some there are some uh, factors that have changed for him. At the end of the day, he's still got to put the ball in the uprights. And I think when you look at some of the holds, it maybe hasn't been quite as clean as, as Haber's have been, but still good enough to where he shouldn't be just missing kicks. I mean, I think the Texas Tech, uh, the PAT, it looked like on a second view to me that it might have gotten tipped. Uh, it shouldn't be low enough to get tipped. And, you know, the kick, uh, the actual field goal, again, it wasn't a, a chip shot, but it's 40-plus yards. It's something he can hit, and he pushed it right. So, it's. I think it's something they're going to monitor. You know, I, you have to be able to kick field goals, obviously, and you have to be able to trust your kicker. I and mean, I think maybe more than anything else, it's, you know, he need, the, the coaching staff needs to be able to trust him. They need to be able to say, hey, we need three points here. Our kicker is going to go get us three points. I, I'm not, I don't think they've lost that faith in him because I think if they had, they would have made a change. But, you know, I, I don't know how you wouldn't be a little concerned if you're the staff of, okay, you know, Dean's got to put the ball between the uprights. It, it, you, you need those points. I mean, you can't leave points on the board. They leave four points on the board last week based off the field goal and the extra point. It doesn't end up mattering. But, you know, in a close game, those things can be very, very important. You know, Jamie, a question for you regarding the offensive line. They've done a great job. They're, 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 they're averaging over seven yards a carry, you know, and protecting Mateer. Now, Mateer was a big part of that. So two things. One, if you can get the consistency and get guys back that are not hurt, that seems to help, you know, moving forward. And two, how did Mateer look in practice? He t you, you take a beating when you take that many shots, you know, and you run that much. Uh, did he look like he had his legs back, uh, you know, early? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things with John is, He's as, he's as tough as they come, and, and that's a, obviously a cliche. Everyone says that about, oh, this quarterback's tough. He legitimately is. Well, he, there was a game last year, I think it was Northern Colorado, and he took an absolute shot. And uh, he said afterwards, I probably should have come out of the game, uh, but I didn't really want to, so I decided to stay in or something like that. So he, he looked no worse for I actually saw him walking around campus. Uh, um, he, he looked totally fine. And I think with the offensive line, it's, it's just it's a matter of continuity. And for the first time, probably since the Leach days, they've got the same group for the most part back, the one exception being uh, Devin Kalaney in for, for Connor Domnus. And it's not like Kalaney's a, a first- or second-year guy. He's been in the uh, the program five years. And then you look at – you've got Taylor Vea at left guard. He's been around. He played last year. Foley's now in his second year. Brock Dew's been around. Christian Hilborn's been around. Uh, when they get Moe back, he's been around. So they've got – a group of guys who not only have experience playing, but experience playing together. And I think that has certainly helped them improve. Sure. It helps when John Matier can basically get out of any sex. You know, I, I think there's a, a pretty stark contrast in Cam Ward's mobility and John Matier's mobility. Cam could 
do his tightrope act, end up, you know, 20 yards uh, off to the left and maybe make something happen. Latir's just going to go. And I think that's maybe where there is a, a difference between those two. But, no, it has been better. And I think, again, you mentioned the, the, the rushing game. They're opening holes. And I think the run, the running backs are better than they were last year. I mean, again, no disrespect to, to Nakia Watson, but I think, uh, you know, you have Schlenbaker, Pulalasi, and Payne again. And then I think it's fair to say through two games, Sean Parker is probably a better running back. He's just more elusive. He's more versatile. So I think there's a lot of things at hand, especially on the interior of that offensive line. And that's kind of what I really look. I look at that right side with Dew and Hillborn, and those are two guys now entering their fourth year in the program. Guys who were in the 2021 class, kind of had to go through that first year of not a whole lot of good happen. They weren't coached very well. And then, you know, I think McGuire, Clay McGuire helped bring them along a little bit. And then I think Jared Castor coming in has really solidified their development to where, you know, this group has become, uh, you don't necessarily want to say a strength yet, because, again, we're talking two games and we're talking about an FCS team and a team that rushed three and dropped eight for most of the game. But it was refreshing, I think, to see, A, a run game work, not just once but twice. And, you know, more so against Portland State, Mateer could sit back there and deliver his throws, whereas even when you're playing Northern Colorado last year or you're playing Colorado State or, the you know, some of the weaker teams on your schedule, Cam Ward was under fire the entire game. He was under siege. Now you've got a quarterback who can set his feet a little bit. I mean, some of the, the throws that he made against uh, Portland State, Mateer, that is, it was reminiscent of some of the Leach offenses where Anthony Gordon, Luke Falk would drop back, literally stand flat-footed because they had that much time and make their throw. What do you think, the uh, uh, Jamie, this week, the, the point of emphasis is going to be with the Apple Cup looming? Uh, I, I think it's uh, tackle. <laughs> I think you look at Washington and, um, you know, uh, they've talked a lot about Jonah Coleman, the, the running back. He is a load, and he ran through them last year at Arizona. And he's, you know, he's built uh, he's built very uniquely. He's about 5'10", 230. Um, and the one kind of thing they've said is he's got a very small strike zone. There's not a lot of places where you can really attack him at. You can't, you know, try and trip him up. He's too strong. You can't arm tackle him. You try and, you know, cannonball and launch yourself into him. He'll bounce right off of that. So I think that's the big emphasis from uh, the defensive standpoint. And then the offensive standpoint, you know, I, I think just probably putting together a complete game of passing and running. You know, we, we saw that for the most part against Portland State, but we didn't really see it this past week. And again, part of that was that's how Texas Tech approached things. They did what teams did last year. Rush three, drop eight dare uh, the Cougars to run. Mm -hmm. The difference is this year they're more than capable of doing that. You know, you, you give John Mateer that much space and that many options to run, he will gladly take it. Cam Ward wasn't going to do that. And you see, obviously, what Parker can do in that way. So I think it's defensively that they've got to be able to tackle a little bit better. They've got to be able to bring Coleman down, and they've got to make sure they get pressure on Will Rogers. You know, they, they only have two sacks so far. But I think if you look at those first two games, the pass rush has made an impact. You know, Baron Morton was running for his life a lot on Saturday. And a lot of – there was one of the late fourth down plays where he's flushed out of the pocket and has to throw up a desperation heave. You know, that doesn't go as a sack. You don't get a, a you know, a, a tally in the, in the scorebook for that. But it, that changes the play. And I think continuing to do that is important because, again, Will Rogers is not going to beat you with his legs. He is not going to get out of the pocket and make magic happen that way. If you let him stand and deliver, he will deliver just the way we saw Leach quarterbacks do for years underneath 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 precision so you flush him that's how you beat Washington you've got to get him un uncomfortable get him outside of the pocket and then when they hand off you got to gang tackle uh uh Coleman uh Jamie uh bef before we let you go and appreciate it Jamie's going to come on every week and give us a little news and notes uh, update here on the old crimson podcast even though he's the youngest one on here okay he's, he's it's like when he comes on it's the young guy uh podcast uh, what are you working on what are you going to have uh, up uh, uh this week or coming up there on Coog fan you'd like to promote please yeah uh basically you name it we're uh, we're putting it together we've got some uh, some good old apple cup stories uh Trandon Harvey Cleet Casper those will be coming up this week uh you know, kind of taking a look at the fact that, you know, how the rosters were constructed, especially in terms of, of in-state recruiting and how, you know, Wazoo has made that a priority. And maybe under Kalen DeBoer, it was less of a priority for Washington. I think Fish is kind of getting back towards that. Uh, you know, kind of comparing the lines. I think you look over the years of the Apple Cup, what has told the story is the, the trenches. You know, even those great offensive lines under Leach would get bullied by the Vita Veas of the world. And that's why they could rush three and drop eight, because Vea would take on four blockers and still win. Um, you know, going to have kind of the generic stuff we do every week, the 
with do a five keys with Jack Thompson. Uh, again, you know, have everything that Jake Dickert and one of the assistant coaches says tomorrow or on Wednesday. Not exactly uh, not sure who yet who we're going to get as an assistant. That uh, that always changes week to week. But I would guess probably Jeff Schmetting because we had Arbuckle last week. Um, and then just kind of going into, uh, you know, we got some celebrity Apple Cup uh, predictions, um, you know, guys, ex-players and, and so on, kind of sharing what they think. And then uh, actually uh, doing a, a Zoom call with, with Max Borgi, Armani Marsh, Calvin Jackson Jr., uh, kind of a, a recap, the three heroes, uh, per se, of the last uh, of the last Apple Cup win. So all kinds of different stuff, uh, always loading up for, uh, for Apple Cup week. All right, we appreciate it. We'll, we'll look for it there at uh, cougfan.com. Uh, and, of course, you can follow Jamie there on X, at Jamie Vinick 9 We appreciate it, Jamie. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, sir. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Go there Cougs, is, uh, Jamie. Jamie Vinick, you know, he's not going to give you a go, Cougs. Even yes, he is. No, I, mean, I, I cut you off. <laughs> yeah, you I did. cut you off. You did. Um, That's all right, Pug. You know, the one thing you, you think about, and, and I, you know what, and, and I, forgive me for not bringing it up earlier, but yeah, he's right about that offensive line. It is, it has played a lot better. Yeah. I mean, it's two games and it's, I know what the competition is, is quite like, but, but I'll, I'll say this, Paul, um, Washington cannot get away with that game plan that they have used over many, many years. Well, they Washington, are not yeah. talented yeah. enough. They do not have the guy. I'm telling you, and I don't know how much either of you watch both games. They do not have a difference maker up front. They don't. Well, you know, the interesting thing, at the first two games, they blitzed about 50% of the time. Yeah, yeah. So they're not going to sit back. Belichick, I mean, he's not going to drop eight. He may, you know, in certain circumstances, but he's going to bring pressure. He's going to make you make decisions quickly, you know, and, and so that's kind of the thing where if you – and that's going to be a good test, uh, you know, for Mateer is he's going to have a different kind of game plan thrown at him where yeah. they're, going to, they're going to show one thing, jump into something else. They're going to zone blitz. They're going to bring pressure. They're going to show blitz on one side, come on the other. You know, they're going to loop, loop and stump. They're going to play a lot of games. So it's going to be your ability to read what they're doing and then make those quick decisions and get the ball out or step up and, and get what you can running the football. It's going to be different than what he's faced the last two weeks. Yeah, and, you know, and, and Jim, it's, um, you know, that's the one thing. I mean, their strength of their team is their secondary is still good, you know, and I think the one thing, the small worry that I would have is that he, you know, Mateer likes to, you know, what that whole quarterback battle with him and, and Zevi was, you know, who can limit their mistakes. He, he does like to try to push the ball. And he will try to make a throw that you're like, oh, what are you doing? I mean, the pick last week, right, in the Texas Tech game. Um, and so that would be one small worry because Belichick's NFL world, he's, you know, Mateer is going to see something this weekend he's probably never seen before because of a, a defensive coordinator coming from the National Football League, Jim. How many times do you think Peacock's going to show Belichick on the sideline anyway? I'm already sick of seeing that guy. Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> the hell man <laughs> you know like if that guy's name was like bob jones you think they'd be showing him so much no of course not he does all that weird facial crap uh no I, yeah he's got his hands full doesn't he because we can we can win on the ground or through the air now and i just i love that we're more versatile than we've been in a long time and so mm -hmm. i like i said earlier i'm not even concerned about the game honestly <laughs> Hey, Puck, I don't care. I really don't. I, I just, you know, I'm a coog, man. I'm going to let it fly. I, I, I honestly mean that. I think objectively speaking, if I'm looking at this game, how in the world are they favored by four and a half in this game? I want to know. Somebody explain that to me. I mean, in Seattle, and I think they're, they're coming off appearing in the national championship game. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's, well, that's the other why. thing. Where was the game played last year? And now we're playing it back again in Seattle. And so, you know, we're, our tail's been getting wagged by those, you know, knuckleheads for however many years. This should have been in Pullman. This game should have been played in Pullman. Yeah. Should have been played at the end of the season. I can understand moving it up to accommodate the Big Ten schedule. But the fact that they basically rammed that crap down Washington State's throat to get that game in Seattle, that bothers me as well. That's one of the reasons why so many Kook fans are pissed off. The yeah. other thing, Belichick is the Taylor Swift of Seattle. He's going to be on yeah, the tube all the time. They're all going to check in to see how he's doing. So that'll be lovely. The Taylor Swift of Seattle. <laughs> hey, do you think when 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 the, uh, Benedict Arnold was our AD, uh, or do you think he was already thinking, like, well, I'm going to schedule the game in Seattle just because I know I'm going to take the job? You think that's well, what he was doing? You think that I don't was think his... the AD hey, that, that was Jack on Washington was there very long. served up in his face this weekend, doesn't he? 
I mean, that like no one would have cared if he'd gone anywhere else. No yeah. one would have cared. Everybody would, yeah. would have said, hey, Pat, right. appreciate the job you did here in Pullman. But you, you don't go to Washington. Well, you know, I mean, we all know that. You don't do that. Paul, mm. I want to ask you something before we go. Yes, Are we sir. getting toward the end here? Are we in the fourth quarter? Are you? Do you need to take a nap, or you have to go to the well, bathroom? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Do you have to pee because it's been like forty minutes? So you have to. Go no, I'm okay. Bathroom. I peed before. Do you we have started. adult diapers yet? Like, when does that happen? <laughs> have I said? Have I done this to you yet, Puck? You, you have you not. See that? No, no. Okay. I, I see it. Sure, you know what? I'm it. just getting ready to give you a compliment. You want? You okay. want me to still come out with it, Paul? No. I love yes, this sir. idea that Puck has, and I, I appreciate you giving me shit. Yeah. You know? Hey, that beard's looking. It's looking whiter. It's looking, I mean, there's not really much brown left in that. No, what the I hell? know. I know. It's You're nearing 50, aren't you? Well, I, think the, I think the light's yeah. not helping. Yeah. What's the scale showing lately anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it says get off. <laughs> Paul, not no, good. okay. <laughs> you know what my scale says, hey, Jim? Listen, it goes, the, chubby guy that, the chubby guy that we're working with right now, he had a great idea, I think. So you remember oh, yeah. how great it was when Delora like planted the cougar flag yeah. on the Husky logo? That yep. was awesome. But this is a new take on it. He wants one of the cougars to take like a Pac-2 flag or a Pac-12 flag, and oh. they'll probably have the Big Ten logo there at Lumen Field. How about yep. planting that sucker on the Big Ten logo after we I beat just, the hell out of them? I'd love to see that. I would just set it on fire personally. I think that would be fantastic. And- <laughs> You know, then we could just we could just move on and just say, hey, that's for that's for torching our ass and leaving us in the weeds. And, you know, by the way, if they had any games on national, you know, over the air television the last couple of weeks, the reason those guys left in the first place was because they were so pissed at the Pac-12 network yeah. for not Irony. having national exposure. <laughs> and the CW is in 100 percent of the homes. How about that? Yeah. For so, yeah, it, it's, Jim, it's love great. your question, though. Great job, buddy. Uh, I want to see it. Yeah, I want a flag, and if they have the logo on there, I want to stomp it on the logo, and that's that's what I want to do. That that's what I would do if if I were them, and if they can they they can pull I it love out. That. And... Please God, let that happen. Oh, that please, would be great. please. I'll go to you church know, Sunday if that happens. Yeah, just Jim, whatever whatever you need. You could rush the field, Jim. Oh wait a minute, you're going to be at a, you're wearing a little hat for a birthday somewhere. It's so you're his not gonna granddaughter, be Paul. My God, like. <laughs> taken her to the game and then says hey honey let's go out and plant the flag and if any husbands get near you throw your cake at them let's okay? throw let's the bjorn throw the bjorn on and take her to the game exactly can What's you imagine if i didn't go to the party though my daughter would just disown me she'd be like i can't believe you put cougar football ahead of your granddaughter you can't well, believe it after you've known pr- me for how many years she probably would just bring back scarring memories of when you put cougar football above her <laughs> Yeah, well, Cougar football's gone. Come on, we we got to on your tombstone. I mean, when your on. kids speak at your funeral, all three of them are going to say he loved his Cougar football. Some would say more than us. I'm so, they I'm would just so come proud, over and pour crimson lager on Jim's head. Is what they oh. would do. They would just open the casket and pour the beer right on top of him and say, "Here you go, buddy." <laughs> Cheers. All three of my kids are cougs, Paul. I'm three for three. One I know. of them is graduating. Awesome. Two of them are there. God, you I'm are so awesome. happy about that. You did your job. Yes, yeah, he I did. did. Do my job. All right. Uh, and we've done our job. It's the Old Crimson Podcast, Apple Cup Week, uh, brought to you by the Cougar Collective. If you're watching uh, there on YouTube, that QR code, uh, click on that. Take a picture of it. It's going to take you right to the Cougar Collective. You can donate. You can make a one-time donation. You can sign up for any tier that you want to. Uh, as little as $18.90 a month if you join the 1890 Club. Uh, you also uh, go out and find at your nearest store the Old Crimson Legendary Lager, uh, brewed by Pike Brewing right behind me. Look at that beautiful can and box. Uh, sales benefit the uh, Cougar Collective. Uh, visit cougarcollective.org. Also, support our buddy Andy Largen and his beautiful family. And I mean, did you know he is one of? He has eight siblings, I believe. That's he unbelievable. Like Jordan or something? I don't know. It's un- I met I met his family at the Portland State Cape. What a lovely family! Both teachers, just a great family. Um, Andy, of course, uh, runs operates uh, Flat State Pub, Cougar owned and operated. Six amazing locations in the state: Kirkland, Pioneer Square, South Lake Union, Spokane, Bellingham, and Redmond. It's great for every event you want to uh, have. Uh, great for kids, and of course, a great place to watch the Cougs. And a great place to celebrate the Cougs. Visit flatstickpub.com. All right. Next week, I hope we're talking about someone planting a flag on that Big Ten logo. I do, too. God, please. Always you guys us, have a prediction? Them. What's your prediction? 
I, I got the Cougs winning 45-13. Wow. I'll say 28-20 Cougs. 24-21 Cougs. Oh, that's right, Paul. You said that earlier. Okay. What did yep. you say, Jim? 45-13. Man. Wow. Jesus. Like your optimism. Oh, God, I love that. Good We're going to rub their noses in it, Puck. <laughs> yes, we hey, are. Jim, as Coach Dickard said, always us, never them. And that's no better statement than right there, big boy. Well done. There it is, the Old Crimson Podcast. Find it on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts, and, of course, up at uh, pucksports.com. All right, boys, we'll talk to you next week. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. If it's fun you desire, it's fun you're going to get at Flat Stick Pub. It doesn't matter what the occasion is, whether it's date night, guys night, ladies night, or a large group event, Flat Stick Pub's got you covered. They have six great locations across the Pacific Northwest, from Pioneer Square to Kirkland, South Lake Union, Spokane, Bellingham, and Redmond. All locations offer the best pub experience in Washington. Two rules at Flat Stick Pub, drink local and have fun. Pretty simple. So if you like to have fun, love local beer and great tasting food, make Flat Stick Pub your next spot. Visit them at flatstickpub.com.